hello world so i finally did it i am pulling the trigger trying to learn how to use iMovie and make a vlog so right now it's really rough bear with me it's a learn to edit and add some cool things it'll probably end up being cooler maybe <laughs> we'll see um but i really wanted to share this journey into becoming a bobsledder with you guys because one i'm just loving the ride and two <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people ask me a lot of questions. A lot of people are interested and invested in what I'm doing, which is cool. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys all the information on what's going on in my life and each step of the process and how it's going. So we'll start with how I got into this. Um, I grew up as a figure skater, so I always loved Olympic sports, especially Winter Olympics. Um, my figure skating Olympic dreams died at 14 when I fell down a flight of stairs and tore up my knee and then was shortly there afterwards diagnosed with reflex neurovascular dystrophy and juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, which <laughs> took me out of sports pretty much completely. I attempted to play high school lacrosse for like two seasons and it was just, it was too painful, it was too much. I wanted to focus on school, couldn't do it. Um, so from like 14 to 23, literally didn't do any sports, didn't do anything. Um, at one point I had gotten up to 200 pounds <laughs> and was just kind of lost in life. There's a million different things that went on. Um, 23, I started an internship at Georgia Aquarium and one of the staff members there was like into CrossFit. She was super cool. I wanted to be like her. Basically, I was like, oh my God, this is the coolest person I've ever met. She works with whale sharks and she does CrossFit. <laughs> so. It took a whole year though after that for me to even get the guts to try CrossFit, <laughs> but I did. I started it and I literally couldn't even back squat 85 pounds. <laughs> Had to lift with an empty barbell. Um, it was it was hard. It was really hard. Um, and so I quit <laughs> after like a couple months and went to powerlifting because I was like, oh, I want to be strong because I wasn't losing weight fast enough. And so I got super strong and super strong <laughs> and did some power lifting and then I, I missed CrossFit. I missed the competitive atmosphere. And so I went back and kind of just really took off for me skill wise. Like everything started to click. I got finally got pull-ups. Like I was lifting pretty heavy and I was like, okay, this is really good. And I started to try and compete in CrossFit and that was kind of fun. It wasn't very good, but still doing it. Um, and then last year, two CrossFit girls who I looked up to because of their size, because in CrossFit it's mostly shorter, stockier gymnasts, and they were, you know, 5'7", like 170, which is where I'm sitting. And so I was like, these girls transferred to bobsled. I was like, wait, that's an option? I thought only track athletes could do bobsled. <laughs> and they did really well. And I sat on it. I sat on it, like I, I saw this happening in September, October, November. November, I kind of tossed the idea to Drew and I was like, I think I can do this. Like, I'm the right size. I'm not as good of a CrossFit athlete as them, but that's because of the gymnastics. I lift pretty well. Like, I'm not too far off from them where it's a drastic difference. Um, like, I, I can do this. And he's like, well, think about it. If you want to do it, go for it. And so January comes around. I'm like, I'm gonna do this like we're gonna try out and if it's a shit show it's a shit show but we're gonna do it <laughs> and February I had like fully committed I had also started another job with animals trying to make that happen um March I hired a track coach I'm literally like I was going for it I thought that we weren't gonna have to submit online combine which is what was happening because of COVID usually they do they do an in-person event with sprinting um, broad jumps, a shot toss, all sorts of crazy stuff to test your explosiveness and how fast you are. It was online last year and this year. And I, last year was in September. This year it was literally in May. So I had a track coach for two weeks, got COVID, had to take three weeks off. <laughs> and then I had her for like three more weeks and then I was like, hey, time to start filming, yay! So filmed all of this stuff within a week, was like one of the first people to submit. I was like, look at me, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get USA Bobsled's attention. They watched my videos and I had waited for a couple weeks just being like, okay, haven't heard anything, haven't heard anything. Talked to some of the girls who are part of the team and rookies for who got recruited from last year. Like, I don't know what's going on, whatever. And then there's announced that there's a few spots at rookie camp. So that means they had already sent out invites from the combine. I didn't get one. I was in a panic. I was like, oh God, I wasn't good enough. Um, 
when they had a few spots left and a couple of the Olympians were literally advertising, hey, email us um, or DM us if you're interested and we'll see if you're, you know, you match up to what, with what they want. <laughs> and so I DM'd uh, Myers Taylor, Olympic silver medalist and like bobsled legend and Kaylee Humphrey, <laughs> who is also an absolute legend, like multiple gold medalist, insane athlete. And they passed my information on to the head coach who'd already looked at my videos. He re-looked at them 24 hours later, texts me and is like, Hey, we have a spot. We want to give it to you. Can you be here in like three weeks? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> like, absolutely. I'll be there. <laughs> um, and so I got invited to rookie camp. It was crazy. I showed up and I was the only girl who had like never really done track. There was one other girl who had done Olympic weightlifting. So I felt a little more comfortable, although she was like 10 years younger than me. <laughs> she was super great. So I was like, okay, I feel super comfy. But I went in with no expectations. I went in, I was like, I just want to learn. I know I'm not a track athlete. I've literally been running for maybe eight weeks. Three of those weeks I had COVID. <laughs> So I don't, I had no expectations. So we're just learning to push on the wheeled track, which is super, super fun. We had a lifting session, we had a track session. We got to meet all sorts of cool people. And at the end they do a little race to kind of determine a rank um, and to see where you're at compared to the people who are already on the team. And again, no expectations. And I ended up winning, <laughs> which was super cool. I, I won every single round and it's the lowest combined total. So it was, I won and it was mind blowing, but they told me I needed to work on my running. Shocking, crazy. <laughs> I don't run. I literally like as a figure skater, they tell you to run a warm up lap around the rink and I'd walk because I don't run. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I come home and I'm like on this high and then everyone's asking what's next. So what is next? That's a complicated question. <laughs> we'll get into that in a second. <laughs> so, how USA Bob bobsled works is a little confusing to begin with. Add on top of that, it's an Olympic year. The Winter Olympics are in February and COVID. <laughs> it makes this process 10 times more confusing, 10 times more last minute, 10 times more just that. Ah. Um, and that's fine. I chose to do this during an Olympic year for a specific reason, because I wanted to try and get on the team as a lot of the girls were coming out, like retiring their last Olympics and things like that. So that way, the year after the Olympics, I'd already have a year under my belt if I make the team and like, whatever. I had a whole mental process for why now. <laughs> we'll see if it pans out. But so basically, they invited us all back. Um, everyone who was at that camp, they invited us back in November for sliding camp, which is on the ice, which is super, super exciting. It's either, it's probably going to be in Park City, Utah, not Lake Placid, but, um, I still don't have a date for November. It's, they're not very good at communication and that's okay. I get it. Their focus right now is the Olympics and getting Olympic medals, recruiting new rookies and like dealing with us who have no idea what we're doing right now is not their number one priority. And why, why would it be like, that's stupid. <laughs> you have Olympians that are going to the Olympics, like yeah, whatever. Um, but essentially next step would be sliding camp. The next steps after that are very much dependent on individual ability, individual space, space on the team, lots of variables go into that. So, there are people who go to sliding camp and literally make the national team and are on the World Cup circuit that same year. Like they are phenomenal, that's what they do and they go for it. I have zero hopes for that. I'm not aiming for that. I don't have that in my brain. <laughs> my goal is to make it onto the developmental team. I know I need a lot of work. I know I have the raw ability and the strength and the desire to be good at this, but I have a lot to work on. And so um, I'm hoping after November, I can secure a spot on the developmental team and, you know, maybe get one race in like on the North American Cup or something just to kind of get a race in and know what that feels like. But ultimately that could not happen in November either. I could have to come back again in February or March and then maybe that would happen. There's also a possibility that I don't make the team at all. As well as I did at rookie camp, um, you know, there are still other people who are vying for spots. 
there are still a lot of variables and they may not think I'm right for the team. And that's something that I don't think a lot of people understand. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of unknowns when I'm going through this. So I came back and people were like, when are you going to the Olympics? Like, are you an Olympian? You're a future Olympian. And I'm like, I appreciate the hype up, but it is frustrating to an extent because there's a very real big chance that I will never see an Olympics. This is a hard thing to get into. And I'm literally trying to go from couch bound to the Olympics within so many years, probably it'll be a 10 year span. Uh, <laughs> That's a hard thing to do in general. It's a hard thing to make this team when you're an elite athlete coming from track and field and you want to do this. So while I love the hype, there is a real chance that I will never see an Olympics. There is also a real chance that I will never make the national team. You know, there's some people that get on the developmental team and they just don't kind of get to where they need to get to and they don't make the national team. There's a chance that I might not make the developmental team. Like there's, there's a lot of things that I have to go through and a lot of unknowns that might prevent me from reaching this goal. That's okay. Um, I don't think a lot of people understand that that's okay, especially after watching this Olympics where people are like losing their mind when someone gets the silver. I'm like, oh, okay, like that's a silver medal right there, but I'll read. Um, but for me, I'm okay with that. Um, you know, it, it would suck if I all this time, money, effort kind of amounted to nothing, but who gets to like even go to the Olympic training center and try out and be a part of this like rookie recruiting process as a 28 year old science teacher. <laughs> like, So I'm super thankful to even be in the mix of it. Um, and that's something that I really want to drive home is like, it's okay. I might not like, I'm not an Olympian yet. <laughs> Yet though, I, I want to keep that. I am hoping for it, but, <laughs> but de definitely yet big asterisks, like maybe, <laughs> but that's where things stand right now. So right now my focus is November. Um, they could text me back to come sooner. I hope they do. I am willing the gods and the universe or whatever to get a message that I can come back sooner. Um, and get on the ice. They have the new ice house, which is an incredible facility uh, that I'd love to use. <laughs> um, but that's kind of where I'm at. I am focusing on track. So next video, I'm going to show you all my track progress and my videos and kind of what I'm working on with that. I also am focusing on trying to balance my schedule. It's going to be really hard. Starting soon, I'll be teaching full time and trying to train full time. And I have a husband and dogs and like a life. So that'll be a fun thing to explore <laughs> through this vlog of like my multiple mental breakdowns that are going to happen in the future. But if you sat through and watched this whole thing of me just talking, thank you. I promise the next one will be slightly more entertaining. Maybe I'll have figured out editing software and how to do all that. But thank you guys for supporting me in this journey. Love you. <laughs>